Hey, what's up guys? It's Darkroom Duels, and today we're going to be doing a Cosmo deck profile. Cosmos are a really cool deck that basically is focused around the grind game, which is an amazing, amazing ability of this deck, because basically all of your ships float into another ship. For instance, if your Cosmo Dark Destroyer gets destroyed, you get to float into a level 7 monster, because this is level 8, and you just level climb all the way down. So your opponent has to go through a lot of different ships and go through your entire fleet in order to win the game, which is really cool. So, without further ado, guys, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, Hit the bell on the screen, come part notification squad, and definitely, definitely check out that Patreon down in the description because it makes deck profiles like these possible and videos like these possible because we have some awesome rewards for you guys too, like getting your name in the description of every single video, getting a signed card to you into the mail, or even getting to request a deck profile every single month that you are a patron. So let's get straight on into this, guys. So first off, we're going to be playing three copies of Cosmo Dark Destroyer. Cosmo Dark Destroyer has the ability... If this card is normal or special summon, then you get to target one monster on the field and destroy it. And it cannot be targeted by your opponent's card effects. And if this card is destroyed by battle or by card effect and sent to the graveyard, you can banish this card from your graveyard and then special summon a level 7 or lower Cosmo monster from your deck. So it floats into your copies of the next Cosmo monster. We then play a single copy of Cosmo Dark Eclipser. Now, Dark Eclipser is a very unique monster. It can't be destroyed by your opponent's card effects, and then during either player's turn, when a trap card is activated, like Infinite Impermanence or Evenly Matched, you can manage a Cosmo monster from your graveyard and negate the activation. And if you do, destroy that card. And if this card is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, then you can banish this card. And if you do, you get to add a level 8 or a lower Cosmo monster from your deck to your hand. Now, the unfortunate part about Dark Eclipser is, is yes, it does have the best art out of them all, but <laughs> it does not float. It just puts one in your hand, which is very unfortunate that it just puts one in your hand, and it doesn't special summon. So you only play a single copy of it. We then play two copies of Cosmo Forerunner. Forerunner, in fact, does float. And for every time it's on the field, every turn that's on the field during your standby phase, you gain a thousand life points, um, which is really cool. And it can be targeted by opponent's card effects. We then play a single copy of Dogfighter. Dogfighter is really good because once per turn during the standby phase, you can special summon a Dogfighter token, which is a level 6, 2000 attack, 2400 defense. And if this card is destroyed by battle or by card effect, you float into a level 5 or lower Cosmo monster. Speaking of level 5 or lower Cosmos, we play three copies of Slip Rider. Slip Rider is essentially an MST when it's special summoned to your side of the field. And it also has the ability that it, um, if it was destroyed, you could special summon a level 4 or lower Cosmo. Now we do play another level 4. Five Cosmo in the deck, which is our first pilot. The first pilot that we're playing is a single copy of Cosmol Dark Lady. So Cosmo Dark Lady, her effect is, is during either player's turn, you can banish this card to special summon a level 6 or higher Cosmo monster from your hand. And you can only use the effect of Cosmo Dark Lady once per turn. Once per turn, during either player's turn, when another monster uh, effect is activated, you can pay a thousand life points, negate the effect, and if you do, destroy that monster. That's really good just to be able to get you monster destruction. That's really cool, and monster negation of negating a monster effect. And plus, 2200 attack points is nothing to sneeze at. This card is really good just to be able to negate those effects. Really good at negating effects. You usually want to end with this card on the field because it can just negate multiple monster effects on your opponent's turn, or negate at least one monster effect on your opponent's turn. We then play a single copy of Cause Maul Wicked Witch, we get which during either player's turn, you can banish this card um, to special summon one level five or higher Cosmo monster from your hand. You can only use her effects once per turn, and then once per turn during either player's turn, you can banish, you can pay a thousand life points, and then this turn, this card cannot be destroyed by battle or by card effects. Really good at stalling out your opponent and grinding out the game just to make it so your opponent can't um, destroy this monster by battle or card effect, and coming out at 1900 attack points is really good. We then play a single copy of Cosmo Good Witch. Good Witch is really good because she's kind of like uh, Book of Moon, and during either player's turn, you can manage her to special summon a level 5 or higher Cosmo monster from your hand, and you can pay 500 life points and target a face up monster uh, your opponent controls and change it to face down defense. Really good. Two copies of Farm Girl. Farm Girl, during either player's turn, you can manage her to special summon a level 4 or higher Cosmo monster from your hand, and you only use her effect once per turn, and then when this card inflicts battle damage to your opponent, you can pay 500 life points and add a Cosmo card from your deck to your hand. Now, the only reason you play her at 2 is because... You have to inflict that battle damage in order to get the effect off, and we play the copy of Tin Can, which is a lot better at searching our deck. We then play two copies of Sword Trooper. Sword Trooper is really good because during either player's turn, you can banish this card to special summon um, a level four or higher Cosmo monster from your hand, and then you can also 
Once per turn, pay a thousand life points, target a psychic Cosmo monster in your graveyard, and special summon it, which can be any of your other monsters, which helps you sw uh, swarm the field. It can be any of your other um, pilots. All the pilots are psychic, and all of the um, the ships are machines. We then play two copies of Straw Man. Straw Man is really good because during either player's turn, you can banish this card and then special summon a level three or higher Cosmo monster in your hand. And then it also has the ability that once per turn, you can pay 500 life once target one of your banished Cosmo monsters and special summon it, but its effects are negated. For the final Cosmo monster of the main deck, we're going to be playing three copies of Cosmo Tin Can. Now, Cosmo Tin Can is the best searcher of the entire deck. And what this card does is during either player's turn, you can banish this card. Special summon a level 2 or higher Cosmo monster from your hand, and you can only use its effect once per turn. And then it also has the ability that once per turn, during the end phase, which you usually can leave this card on the field, during the end phase you can pay 500 life, reveal 3 Cosmos with different names in your hand, or in your deck, your opponent randomly picks 1, and then you add it to your hand. Then you can send the rest to the graveyard, which is going to help you out with like Sword Troopers and stuff like that, and your other monsters and other spells and traps to get them back, because it's thinning your deck so you don't draw into your ships and brick with them. So... That's it for the Cosmo Monsters. Let's get into the Hand Traps. So for the Hand Traps, we're going to be playing two copies of Nibiru because it is space. Why not play Nibiru as well? Nibiru is really helpful because it does board wipe your opponent and puts a really big monster on your opponent's side of the field. And we have a really easy way of getting rid of the token on our opponent's side of the field in the form of Cosmo Dark Destroyer. Dark Destroyer summons, pops the token, and then you get to keep the Nibiru on your side of the field and just attack into your opponent for 3k, which is super nice with the both monsters each. 3k, which is super nice. Um, the beer is really helpful because it just boards wipes and stops your opponent from establishing those boards. And if we do destroy our own board or one or two of our ships and send them to the graveyard, it's not a super big deal because we have a lot of ways of recovering in this deck. We then play three copies of Ash Blossom as well, just to stop our opponent from doing all sorts of shenanigans, adding from deck to hand, special summoning from deck, or sending from deck to graveyard. It just helps dealing with, when your opponent's trying to deal with their deck and cards in their deck, you just sit, discard the Ash Blossom and stop that. So, that's it for our hand traps, guys. Let's get into the spells. So for the spells, we're going to be playing a single copy of one for one because you're trying to get into your copy of your tin can as quickly as possible because tin can is arguably the best card in the deck besides your Cosmo um, Dark Destroyer. One copy of Reasoning. Reasoning comes in super handy as well because all of your Cosmo monsters are between one and nine. Every single one of them is different levels, and none of them say they can't be special summoned. So your opponent's usually going to call it wrong with reasoning, and so you're just going to get to special summon whatever you get, whatever you draw, anyways. Terraforming is really good because it can add your Cosmo uh, Town to your hand. Two copies of Limiter Removal to be able to boost your ships up and get them uh, higher attack, and then three copies of Cosmo Town. So Cosmo Town is one of the best field spells in the entire game of Yu-Gi-Oh. It's basically a magical mallet that you can reveal any number of cosmos in your hand, shuffle them into the deck, and then if you do draw the same number of cards that you revealed, and then once per turn you can target a banished cosmo monster and add it to your hand. If you do, you lose life points equal to its level. So if I target my copy of Tin Can, this, this is how the deck grinds. If you reveal Tin Can, then you can pay a thousand life points or lose a thousand life points and then immediately get to add the Tin Can back from deck to hand or graveyard to, or banish from uh, to hand, which is super nice to be able to add your pilots back to be able to grind out the game even more. So really good card. And if they do destroy this card by a card effect, you can add a Cosmo card from your deck to your hand. So it just replaces itself. I mean, it's just that good. This card is insane. So that's it for the spells, guys. Let's get into the traps. So for the traps, I've actually bumped my Cosmojos up to two. Cosmojo is really good because it lets you target Cosmo once you control and destroy it, which they're all going to float. All the ships are going to float. And if you do, you get to banish a card from your opponents that they control or in their graveyard, which can be really helpful, especially if you're going up against, for right now, Eldridge. You banish the Golden Lord and it turns everything off, essentially, which is really cool to be able to do. Um, and really, really helpful to be able to just banish something on the field. We then play three copies of Call by the or Call of the Haunted. Uh, Call of the Haunted is really nice because it can bring back any of your ships, and it can start your uh, climb down again. Because if you have like Dark Destroyer on your side of the field, and it gets destroyed, and then you summon out your copy of 
the uh, Forerunner, then you can just flip that call the Haunted and Special Summon back your Dark Destroyer, and then Dark Destroyer's effect, if this card is normal or Special Summon, you can target a card on the field and destroy it. So this card not only becomes a Destruction, or a Revival, but it also becomes a Destruction. So it depends on what you need, depends on what it does. I mean, it can do just about anything that your Cosmo Monsters can do, because it's going to bring them back. So that's it for the main deck, guys. Let's get into the extra deck. So for the extra deck, you don't really need an extra deck, but it does come in handy sometimes when you actually do go into some of these monsters. So we're going to go through them. Uh, one copy of Topologic Zero Boros. Zero Boros comes in handy because you banish a lot in this deck, and it can get really big. And it doesn't matter if you banish the monsters, um, but if something special summoned to zone this card points to, it banishes everything on the field, and then it comes back during the next standby phase. Really cool effect. Kind of reminds me of uh, Fire King High Avatar Garunix, but banishes everything. Um, or... Fire Avatar Garunix on Diesel. Um, but it also has the effect that cannot, monsters can't be special summoned to uh, the extra monster zone this card points to, and it gains a 200 attack for each banished card. And if another monster is special summoned to a link zone this card points to, then while this card is in the on the field, then you can banish all cards on the field. Really good to be able to get a big beat stick on the field. Unchained Abomination, because it pops cards, you can pop your own cards, which is super nice to be able to pop your ships and kind of tag them in and out with the Unchained Abomination. And it can pop your opponent's cards, which is super nice. Access Code Talker, because we play so many different uh, attributes in the extra deck. We play Earth, Wind, Dark, Fire, Earth. Um, you play a lot of different attributes in the extra deck. So this card's really nice to be able to get those pops on your side of the field and get a big beat stick out on the field. Tobologic uh, Bomber Dragon. Tobologic is really good because... Topologic just gets us that extra pop on the field that if a monster special summon to his own card points to, then it just pops the, all the cards that are monsters on the field, and if it inflicts battle damage to your opponent, um, or destroys a monster by battle, then you get to um, inflict damage to your opponent equal to the monster's original attack, so they're going to take 3,000, essentially. Uh, Boral Sword to help OTK, because it can attack multiple times, and also does is the OTK card of the entire game. Um, Blackluster Soldier is easy to go into. You just basically use a level 7 or higher monster going into this card. It can gain 1,500 attack points, uh, make a second attack during each battle phase, or banish a card, which is really cool. And also if you use a level 7 or higher monster to summon this card, um, it can be targeted by your opponent's card effects, um, and it can be destroyed by your opponent's card effects, which is really cool. Um, Trisbania, because this deck isn't really reliant on, like, face up spells and spells and traps and stuff it's really focused around the ships like you yes you will get cosmo town on the field and yes you'll get called call the honda on the field but if you banish one of them it's not the end of the world and it can be the end of the world against your opponent with trispania if you banish all their cards uh mega phantom beast um auroradon auroradon helps out because it gives you tokens and you tribute the tokens and then destroy a card on the field or add a trap um from your graveyard to your hand which can be your copy of call of the haunted or your copy of Cosmojo, which can basically reuse your mojos. Um, your copy of Nightmare Unicorn. Nightmare Unicorn bounces stuff, which is kind of helpful. Phoenix pops spells and traps. Cerberus pops monsters. Underclock Taker can boost attack points, which comes in super handy. Link Rebo helps us because sometimes you're going to this card with your if your if your opponent negates your um, tin can or they try and get rid of your tin can in some way then you can just always link it in link rebo you know they're going to stop the tin can you can just link in a link rebo and just sit on it and it helps out uh relinquished anima is really cool because relinquished anima can gobble up an opponent's monster so if your opponent has a problematic card that this card can point to you just immediately gobble up the card which is nice and then we play a single copy of sea dragon levin air levin air can bring back banished cards bring back banished monsters which is super helpful that are level four or lower um so just being able to special summon them back to your side of the field is super helpful and you can go into this with sword trooper and your copy of cosmo farm girl now again you don't super need an extra deck so if there's anything in here that's really pricey for you guys like access code talker or the bls or boral sword you can totally drop those out and play something else it's fine it's not the end of the world if you don't have an extra deck if you have zero cards in the extra deck you can still play cosmos i have seen somebody one of my best friends actually todd who's on the staring at games channel actually is my co-host on staring at games he actually plays cosmos he doesn't have an extra deck. He plays, like, nothing. Nothing in the extra deck. He doesn't need it. Um, the only other thing that you might be able to drop in here is Cyber Dragon Nova and Infinity, but I don't want to usually use my Slip Riders to go into it because it's so hard to get two Slip Riders out on the field. But if you want to go that route, too, you can drop out, like, a Relinquished Anima and Underclock Taker or the Nightmare... Um, 
the Nightmare uh, Cerberus. You can drop Nightmare Cerberus and Relinquished Anima or Underclock Taker. These two and put Cyber Dragon Nova and Infinity in here. But you don't really go into them all that much, so I don't really play it. So that's it for the deck, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Definitely tell me what you guys think of this deck down in the comments down below. It's a super fun deck to play around with um, and really consistent. It's, again, all about that grind game. It's super fun to play. And it's just an overall good deck. Like, it's just really, really, really good. And it's aged super well. Like, this deck has aged really, really well. So, anyways, guys, this is Dark Arm Duels. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Hit the bell, news, and gun bar notification squad. And definitely check out that Patreon down in the description. Because we got the awesome rewards for you guys. And I'll see you guys in the next video. See you later, guys.